part A, and we're looking at the series parallel circuit. So, what's going to happen in this particular lesson? We're going to explain how electrical circuits have components connected in both series and parallel and in multiple combinations. We're going to explain how you can go about calculating voltage, current, and resistance values in a series parallel circuit. So if you're using uh, the textbook, this is section 8.1 and 8.2 from the textbook, and it's worth having a textbook as you follow along with these lessons. So lesson and lesson seven and lesson eight in lesson seven, we looked at uh, series circuits, and in lesson eight, we looked at parallel circuits. So basically what we're going to do now is we're just going to have circuits that involve both series and parallel in different combinations. So when solving problems with uh, series parallel networks, it's important to understand there is a big picture and a small picture. And you can see here on the uh, circuit diagram in the middle of the screen, we have three basic circuits that are in parallel and in one of those parallel branches we then have three lamps that are in series. So when I'm talking about big picture, little picture, I'll just turn the, the pen on. The big picture is the whole picture. Here's the big picture. I'll just draw a circle around it. That's the big picture. But in this particular case, it's made up of three smaller pictures. So we've got this part, this part, and this one in particular, which has the three lamps in it. So when I'm talking about big picture and small picture, I'm talking about big picture being the whole circuit and the small picture being those critical parts of the smaller parts of the circuit, either series or parallels, depending on what we're dealing with. So a series parallel circuit, it can involve any arrangement of series or parallel connected components. Often needs to be simplified, that is the big picture brought down to a small picture. So voltage, current and resistance values can be found. Simplification will always be either a series or parallel network at the end. So it's always simplified it all the way down. It will either be all series or all parallel. Could have many different types of components or devices. It doesn't have to be all resistors. It could be resistors, capacitors, switches. All kinds of components can make up different parts of a series parallel network. And we're only looking at circuits that have resistors. So we're going to use the KISS principle of keep it simple, stupid. So. We're only going to be reusing resistors as we go through our explanation of series parallel circuits. So here we have resistance and resistances in a series parallel circuit. And we've got circuits within circuits. So to find the total resistance of this circuit, we simply need to first simplify it into an equivalent circuit. And we'll do that in a moment, we're using some slides, but before we get to the slides, the big picture is we've actually got three groups in series. So this kind of makes up one of the groups, this makes up one of the groups, and this makes up one of the groups. Of course, this one here in the middle, group two, is a little bit more complicated because it's got a group within a group. So these two resistors here, form a series network, which we can simplify just by simply adding the two values together. And then once we've added the two values together, we can reduce it down further and simplify it to one single resistance through here. And that way we'll end up with section one, section two, and section three of a much simplified series circuit. So how do we go about doing that? So 
Here's our process. So we can do it in three reasonably straightforward steps. So as I said before, we have basically identified this smaller picture here, which we did earlier. We called that group number two. And we said, okay, we can simplify that. And we can simplify it in the first step by adding R3 to R4, so 150 plus, uh, 150 plus 450 gives us that 600. So that 600 simply comes from the addition of those two. So now I have a 400 ohms in parallel with a 600 ohms, and I can find the uh, equivalent resistance by uh, adding up the inverses of both and then inverting it back again to give me the total. But without going through all the maths, um, that will give me 240 ohms. So then we have down to our group one. Our group two has now been simplified. And our group three that we identified in that first slide. So all we have to do now is add the three together and it would give us our total resistance. So 100 ohms, well it might be easy to do the 240 plus the 60 is going to give us 300 plus the 100 means that we're going to end up with 400 ohms is going to be our total resistance is equal to our total. So again, if the trick here is to look at the big picture, to find the small picture you might be able to break down, which was this one, here's the smaller picture. Break it down and break it down and break it down until that small picture is left with its most simple form. And then we are down and we go back to the big picture. So we go back to the overall big picture once we've done that, which was the whole three resistors together. And we've gone back to the big picture. So as you can see, we've gone big picture, small picture, and then back to the big picture. And that is a standard problem solving approach when it comes to series parallel networks. So here we have another one. So this time resistors in a parallel series circuit. And if you can't already see it, there's already three parallel bunches. And within those parallel bunches, there are some series arrangements as well as some more parallel arrangements. So again, let's have a quick look at those before we look at the problem solving slides. And straight away, Let's identify our smaller pictures. So this resistor by itself here, R1, is going to be one of the small pictures we'll be identifying. And we won't have to do anything with it. It's already only got one resistor in it. The next little picture, small picture we need to identify is this one. And I'll call him number two. And he's got some resistors in series and some resistors in parallel. So here we've got parallel and up here we've got series. And then over here, we've got another group which effectively is in parallel with our groups one and two. So this one here, group three, is another one, but it is also in parallel with one, two. So again, in here, we've got some series, and we've got some parallels in our smaller picture. So let's have a look at how we're going to go through and solve this one. So what we're going to do is look at group one, which is the kind of the browny, pinky, orange color here. I'll turn my um, pen back on again. So here's our group one. As I said before, with group one, we don't have to do any clever changes. With group two, 
which is this one, we simply have to work out this parallel arrangement first. So the 300 in parallel with the 700, and then put it in series with the 190, therefore giving us this equivalent resistance here. So the blue group, which I call group two, ends up with a simple equivalent resistance. And our yellow group, so that's the one I called group three, Again, we would do the addition of the series resistors here first, which is going to give me about 600 ohms in parallel with 400 ohms. So I would do the series addition, then parallel with 400 ohms, giving me eventually this equivalent here. So I'm back to my three groups which have now been simplified into three single resistances and I can now calculate the resistance total by adding up the inverses and then inverting it back again. So original circuit nice and easy and the equivalent as a parallel circuit and as I said you can take that all the way down to one single resistor. So let's look at the blue group and do the maths as we go down. So here's our blue group, if you remember. We had to do the parallel first. So I just turn my pen on. Remember, we had to do this parallel first. And if you parallel 300 with 700, you'll get 210. Then all we had to do was add the 210 to the 190. And that gave us an equivalent resistance now of 400 ohms. So we're doing a simplification within a simplification. So now taking our next group, remember this time we had a couple of in series. So this couple in series here, we add them together first. As I said, the 150 plus the 450 gives us the 600 ohms. And then we needed to parallel the 400 and the 600. And if you do that, you will end up with 240 ohms, giving you the equivalent resistance. So at the end of the day, our final simplification is reduced to three resistors. Our group one, you'll notice, didn't change. Our group two, reduced to 400 ohms, and our group three, reduced to 240 ohms. And as I said before, if we were to add up the inverse of 120 and the inverse of 400 and the inverse of 240 and then invert it back again, it would also give us R total. So our R total will be 1 on 1 on 120 plus 1 on 400 plus our 1 on 240 would give us our overall total. And if you do all of that, it will come down to 66.7 ohms. So this equals sixty six point seven ohms or R. So that brings us to the end of um, DC lesson eight part A. I hope you've enjoyed um, understanding big picture, little picture, big picture. So we reduce our problem by understanding the big picture, reduce the small pictures and then go back to big 